ndi beke na emuno asem kan ka chikwelo ya zelo asi ndu mire ndu azu mina ta na mazu anwuna asa drai mana ike drai mana ole fuza ya mana afo fuza ya mana ampo oza ya no kendi bo jibiri asi na adra ni bo na ma o ise 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 am di ko si de ka bapo ni osi go si ya bi fa juma ke wo ebia na chipo ya ga ni go si ya bi fe obran ka bo bo si zige ina ejete afo sana la ya ni ba kuko ka ba ro ke like and subscribe o si ko comment share bo ya to sa ya bo zi ko mu na ndi no ebe di teacher we ni ya bi fe na me no boda e di ko si de ya wo te do nta ta bo ni ku update di o ke mpa ma cho ko nyo bo na mi si ya ma cho ki ge ya bi fe ge se bi fe wo te do no o se ma ke bi fe no me no bo do i no ni mi ya and wo ro ndi bo na aso drop ora yo on comment ni ya won na wo ke ku ni ru akuko do ke mba ka mari fiche no din ke gi all right over to you sir attitude a necessary recipe for nigeria's future success they say that uniting this country is an ineradicable part of progress and deepening that unity has to be anchored on true federalism which in turn will bring a fundamental fix to Nigeria's economy in other words Nigeria must become a nation before it can fully enjoy economic success but others view it as deeply unpalatable at best a major distraction and at worst even dangerous So tonight in so far as it is possible to be objective we're asking how might restructuring and a fresh constitution shape the future of this country between the president and presidents how might president tinubu use this opportunity to set a new political and economic precedent for this country Well, to reflect on Nigeria's direction of travel with regard to restructuring and a possible new constitution I'm joined now in the studio by the former presidential candidate and former minister of education Dr Obi Ezekwesili who's also a former minister of solid minerals former vice president of the World Bank co-founder of Transparency International and co-founder of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. She's currently the CEO of Human Capital Africa, which works in the education sector across Africa and is the founder of the School of Politics, Policy and Governance here in Abuja. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles. And you are often referred to as one of the driving forces behind some of Nigeria's most progressive reforms that challenged corruption extremism and things like gender based violence where does the issue of restructuring and the drive for a fresh more representative constitution fit into what you consider to be the pecking order of priorities in nigeria i actually think that uh within the context of um the performance of our country uh especially the inability of our leadership uh to harness and to mobilize the group resources that we have in different dimensions toward um consistent top performance the matter of fundamentally uh conversing on how we would agree our shared values our national vision our agreed common ad- identity in a society that is as multiplural as ours now gets to the top of the agenda uh, and the simple way of saying it is that the structure that nigeria has had uh, has contributed enormously the evidence is of course there to uh, the low productivity of a country that could be even if you used the least um uh, possible comparator country that would be say indonesia which you know ticks the boxes in similar ways historical 
uh, political, you know, military, adventurism, historical, uh, colonized also, um, and then uh, multi-ethnic, multi-religious. I mean, you, it really, oil, the effect of mm. oil and uh, natural resources. So if you looked at all of that and you said, let's just use data. <laughs> I normally, you know, uh, crack up when I say to people that in, in God I trust, but every other person must bring data. Um, and so if you use data to sort of say, how do we compare? Um, you would find such wide gap. They have a population of about 257 million. Mm. We have a population of a little over 200 million. They are now at um, income per capita of almost $6,000, some 5,000 plus. We are at, <laughs> we go yo-yo, mm. but within a very low bottom of um, anything between $2,300 when we are fairly okay to current numbers of about $1,600. So when you look at that, and then you look at the, uh, the extent, the gamut of possibilities that we have, then there are questions to be asked. And those questions are important questions that point you in the direction of the kind of structure of governance that this country has been, you know, run on. Well, let's zero in on that because the question must then be how might a new constitution restructure this country and shape its future for the better? How would it cater to this country's basic and fundamental needs? Because the constitution is the organic, uh, in, you know, um, the organic documentation of the practice of governance by any state uh, as in a country. And it encapsulates uh, the, um, the rights of citizens and the extent and definition of sovereignty. Mm. And then the principles that shape and direct the way that governance happens, they fundamentally lay the, 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 the groundwork for everything that is signaled to society. So the signaling to the citizens, the signaling to business, the signaling to the state itself, as far as the remit of what it can do and cannot do, mm. how it can do it and not do it. The whole uh, constitutional conversation in the case of Nigeria would take you immediately to the practice of its political system. And so that practice of political system, we have seen that to be one of the toughest barriers that we have had. Uh, and so when we chose in the, um, in, in, at independence that we would be a federal system of government, the constitution that brought us into independence. And, and that federal structure basically thought of what it would take to optimize the prospects and possibilities and minimize the challenges of bringing disparate people with very different and diverse mm. uh, ethos and, and values and, and opportunities and strengths and weaknesses. He thought of that which is what you find in multi-plural societies. So that's why you would look at it in, 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 in an Australia or in New Zealand or, or in Canada, and you find them constantly, even in Brazil, sort of trying to figure out how to bring all of these parts mm. together so unity into is coherence. Yeah. So, so it's not just unity for the sake of unity. It is that there has to be a rallying vision mm. while at the same time giving people sufficient leeway and room to be as progressive, as right. competitive, as innovative as they can. So, 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 so we, haven't, mm. we haven't practiced right. that. We have, what happened was that in the season, <laughs> I was born in 1963, but I get to hear the, the, the older ones sort of talk about regionalism and the practice of it and what it um, you know, achieved in our country and the data. 
actually is there. Now, it is the fact that the military adventurism knocked that off. Mm. And when it knocked that off, the political class of our country suddenly realized that, wait a minute, maybe that's not a bad idea actually, because if anyone manages to fight, fight his way to the center, then he becomes the only present. And, and he picks all of the power and he uh, you know, aggregates the power, accumulates it, deposits it in himself. And so this political level of selfishness then came in the way of the constitutional changes that are necessary to get us back to that place mm. that was the original intention. Right. So what then has happened is that we have structures that are totally alienated from that which it should be connected to. So we say, oh, we have local governments. Well, we have local governments that are very centralized in their mindset. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have state governments. We have state governments that just simply look at Abuja as a place they come to collect rent, from, <laughs> for, you know, and then only do expenditure. So, so they exist in theory, those institutions, but, but they're not being practicing what they I, I, ought to I, be. And, and the point you, you were making is that there needs to be some sort of corporate vision that unites all the people in that vision. And you see that... Um, that constitution as having the possibility of doing that. But, but what do you say to those who insist, particularly in the North, that given all their current afflictions, that a new constitution is as unpalatable as it could possibly be, and, and even dangerous uh, in terms of it being a distraction, and that the document is not the problem but those operating it are. And you just gave the example. You talked about local government. I mean, it exists in the document, mm. but in practice, mm. there's hardly a, any local government that actually exercises powers in Nigeria. So um, by the time we next saw a constitution um, following the period of, um, of, of the... the um, the civil war, mm. the military adventurism leading to the civil war and then um, the end of the civil war and military rule. 1979 constitution, right, was a military version of what we should be guided by as a people. And that constitution gives way ultimately to the 1999 constitution, another military constitution. Mm. And so there was the 89 constitution, but it didn't actually take yeah, effect. Yeah, so yeah. We, you know, the 99 is constitution is the central thing now. Now, when you think in terms of the constitutionalism and the constitutional process, there is so much attention that is given to the substance. That is what you say about it contains because it's a it's the it's the it's the document that contains mm. uh, these rules and practices but even much more attention is given to process the legitimacy of the state is often dependent on the process mm. that emerges the strictures and the structures and the processes and the procedures of the state when you look at the, at, at the constitutional processes, you would find that there's an alienation of the larger bulk of the Nigerian people for whom the constitution should be the practice of life mm -hmm. as citizens. But is it going to make any difference if, if you change the current one? I mean, a lot of people will still remain, I mean, so alienated you're you're from it, given the fact that there's poverty, I mean, crushing poverty, there's illiteracy. I think, I think you're missing and, a hook. And those are elements <laughs> that, that would bring them closer to the concept of no, a constitution. No, but, but you're missing a step there. So why, why is it that those who argue mm. on the necessity for this country to have a conversation that is people-centered and which then leads to agreements on 
what really are shared values. People who are arguing for that are people who are sensibly looking at what has happened to our society. One critical factor that enables development is what we call social capital, social cohesion. Mm. We lack it. It's depleted. You can't do much in rallying your people toward development without that. Another thing that's important is your shared values. I mean, people constantly say, because they have heard people say it, so they say, it's institutions that matter, not the human beings. Oh, that's a very sound word. But <laughs> yeah, but the institutions are made up of Don't conflate. <laughs> the, you know, right. the, okay? So, so we do know mm. that the simple definition of institution is the way people do their things. Mm. Have we agreed how we do our things in Nigeria in ways that really bind us to certain sets of shared values that if anyone negated it, it wouldn't matter. Right. who they are. And then the matter of, hey, we've got different definitions. I am a woman, Christian, Igbo, um, just name all kinds of uh, other, append uh, what do you call it, um, affinities that I have. Yet, I am Nigerian. So being able to come to the place where a set of Things enable us define mm. that common identity. Now, you know what all of that is? That's part of the process. Because the process of constitution uh, making is to enable the citizen look at the document and see themselves in mm. it. And, and that sense of you know, ownership of, of how the state operates and how the people relate and interact and how the institutions and the systems work. That ownership is the most significant thing that begins to move people from country to nation. Mm. Now, nation formations are very important, important ingredients that succeed in determining the level of aspiration that the people have. Today's Nigeria, what would you say is our aspiration? If you asked a Nigerian and you said to them, why does Nigeria exist? Do you think we have had that conversation? We haven't. So what has happened is that even the constitutional process has always been the pastime of the, uh, in, in quote, the political elite of our society. So you've got a very insignificant percentage of Nigerians who have their Rolodex of names. And those names can come together at any point in time and be chosen as the wise and often wise men, men you know, who then decide what should be in the constitution. When you have that, especially in a world that is increasingly showing clearly that it belongs to the young. When you look at the mean age of the continent today, it's about 18.2 mm. years. You know, so when you have that, and yet you're holding them down to systems and, 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 and contexts that are not reflecting the very important and significant issues that they want to be able to solve. So for example, two critical things that Nigerians, the dominant young people in Nigeria would want to see Nigeria be about is a productive country and a competitive country. When they look at themselves and they look at their colleagues in the rest of the world, they see themselves as capable of being that. But there are barriers mm. holding them back. And when you, if you follow the process of Einstein, Einstein would say, uh, you know, famous quote, is if I had an R to solve a problem, I would use 95, uh, six, um, if I had an R, I would use 55 minutes asking the right questions. Mm. If I could just ask the right questions, five minutes is enough for me to have the answer. Well, let me try and ask you a right question in these circumstances. Um, you, you make a very powerful argument there, but your former boss, President Obasanjo, has been quoted as saying that the core problem facing Nigeria is not necessarily the constitution, but the crux of the challenges 
lies in the attitude and character of those who operate the constitution. What do you say to that? The operative word being necessarily. Mm -hmm. That's important, right? So basically, when you use the word necessarily, it therefore means that you have not dismissed the argument for a constitution. Yeah, but, the, in, but in his second sentence, yes, he makes well, it I'm, ineluctably I'm, clear that the crux of the challenges yes, lies in the attitude yes, and I'm character of those who operate the constitution. I totally agree with him okay. that you know, the character uh, of leadership uh, is really at the heart of a lot of our political failures, but it is not enough. It is a necessary factor, very important factor, but the truth is if you have hurdles that stand in the way of how you have uh, divided responsibilities and duties, how you have uh, expressed the necessity for accountability, what you have expressed as the social contract between the state and the people, what institutions uh, operate and how they operate mm. so that you have uh, upgraded and updated the eff effectiveness as well as the efficiency of the operation of your system through your constitution, then even if we got uh, the most credible of people in today's Nigeria, they will come up against those barriers that are standing in the way of optimization of productivity right, okay. and competitiveness of our society. Well, let's and go. you know, without productivity, competitiveness of Nigeria, what would happen is that people would hear that we have an income per capita of 2000 and it would go over their heads right. as to what that means in terms of the viability sure. and long-term sustainability of a country that adds 3% of population growth while growing at less than 4%. Right. Well, let's go from the broad and general to the particular. You made a submission, I believe it was in 2021, to the National Assembly Committee that was reviewing the 1999 Constitution. Mm -hmm. What were the specifics of that submission? <laughs> well, ours was a very simple one. Mm. We, we said to the nas then National Assembly that, you know, the, the, there's really uh, no need, uh, based on what we have seen so far, there was no need to continue to tinker on the margins of this constitution. It is fatally flawed in some of the provisions right. where there's a lopsidedness of centralization. The centralized approach to solving problems that can be solved at decentralized and disaggregated basis uh, is a nightmare for performance. It is a nightmare for optimization in the use of scarce resources. So we said, stop tinkering on the margin. You can do something different uh, to move the society toward this kind of a, a national conversation backed by law uh, that then leads toward a, a, a set of you know, issues that we are solving for mm. because your constitution has to be solving for something. And, and in, in, in that process, what you should do is a single issue amendment. Do a single issue amendment of the Constitution to allow for the process that leads to a constitutional uh, making approach that is representative of the various layers and levels of the issues and the factors that are creating the biggest bottleneck to Nigeria's greatness. Now, if we want to be a really great country. We have to envision how to be that. The constitution that comes out of that process would be a constitution that amalgamates the ways that that is possible. And that comes from a very thorough process and rigorous process of conversations on how countries have solved certain problems mm. that were still stuck at the bottom but trying to solve. Right. So we said do a single issue amendment and then allow for 
a referendum as part of that, 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 that single issue amendment that opens up the space for a different approach than what they are doing. What they say, we're, ha we're, we're, we're hamstr hamstrung, Strong, yeah. yes, hamstrung. in terms of uh, the provision on how the constitution can be amended. But then the evidence that we see, whether it's in terms of the political dysfunction of Nigeria as we see it today, or the social uh, uh, collapse of, of cohesion and, and capital, or it is in terms of our economic, economic paralysis that is not leading to the kind of structural change that can transform and make this society a society that enables those with the possibilities to be great, right. to become great. But what now, if you looked at all of that and all of those hurdles, what you then do is to make sure that you're not pretending that by moving some clauses in the constitution uh, as is today, fatally flawed, that you can achieve that. It's the extent of your aspiration that determines whether you really want to say, let's keep, you know, uh, uh, using tippex to, right. to move Well, let, let me out. just come in there, um, because, I mean, if they said to you, not necessarily in 2021, but mm -hmm. today, sort of like what the president said, when the patriots went to meet him i mean he he made it clear that you know yeah this may well be a great idea but that's i mean that's you know further down the road let's focus on trying to deal with the immediate economic problems if they said that to you that, what would I that, say? that people need to have cheaper food on their tables mm -hmm. as a matter of priority mm -hmm. and that involves considerable intellectual and material energies going into that in order to make that happen. i give you an example. Today, for instance, Nigeria's headline inflation rate, the figures came out today showing that it's fallen by 80 basis points from 34.19% in June to 33.4% in July. The food inflation rate also fell from 40% in June to 39.53% in July. I mean, you may say that those are negligible sort of drops, but some say that that is the priority, easing the burden on the average consumer, which will eventually stabilize the economy. And that is happening without restructuring what would you say <laughs> no no so 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 back again to the uh the extent of your aspiration i find it i find it very painful that the elite of our society frankly don't understand what's going on out there we better be awakened to the fact that the people we are leaving behind it's such a huge number we have poverty biting poverty of for over 100 million of our citizens we they cannot wait ad infinitum mm. so when you think of economic reforms as something that when you're doing it you then don't consider the medium longer term structural issues that are making some of your reforms almost impossible to achieve the right results then you are missing something Critical. But, but why, aren't, so, why aren't the advocates of this constitutional change also focusing on the mindset and the conduct of people who will implement this document that you're but talking But there about? is a focus on it. When you do constitutional process, one of the things that would happen is that people actually define the leadership recruitment criteria. Process. For their countries. Right. They, they simply, they, they have so many things. Look, one key issue in our society today is a complete confusion of incentives and sanction. Good behavior is sanctioned, punished, and, you know, almost hated. And bad behavior is highly rewarded. So there's a, perver a perversion that has happened. Those are the values 
issues that get discussed and the kind of institutional mechanisms as well as the values orientation that would change that become part of the process of your conversation. I think that sometimes when people think of this, converse, this matter of uh, constitutional change, they are thinking of it as just sit down and change the... No, the process is at the center of it. And again, back to this matter of thinking that, oh, you know, we're doing economic reforms, therefore any other thing is a distraction. My goodness, the capacity to actually do <laughs> multiple things is assumed in governance. True. There is absolutely no reason why it should be a zero-sum game. There is no reason why it should be a trade-off of what would ensure the viability, the long-term sustainability of this country. Listen to me, Charles, and I hope that those who are running affairs of the state today are listening. You don't have much time. You see what the citizens were saying to the political class of this country in all of the uh, protests that sparked in this country, they actually are saying, we're impatient now. We're impatient now. If you want to achieve marginal results, stay with the structures as they are. If you want to transform in the way that the citizens have a stake and understand what their own role and duties and responsibilities are in building a Nigeria that transits from country to nation, then be bold enough to aspire for more. Okay, and on that sobering mm -hmm. note, I want to thank you very much thank indeed. You. It's been thank absolutely you, brilliant talking with you. Dr. Obi Ezekwesili uh, was a former presidential candidate, former Minister of Education, former Minister of Solid Minerals, former Vice President of the World Bank, co-founder of Transparency International, co-founder of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, and currently CEO of Human Capital Africa, and also founder of the School of Politics, Policy and Governance here in Abuja. Absolutely brilliant to have you here. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Charles. And the by a Kenepon Mono, a Deconus Webto Guno, a Gabaya Bife, and the Positor Kemba, a Jamakia, where Benny Rahuko, La Ibo Media, where by Sue and Oteroni Yabunu Kozi, Dio Kemba. Bastama ki yene minu bo dayno ni miya. Anu bastama ka mwuro wendi bo na azo. Anu bastama ka maazin nam de kanus ladies. Eh, di ki yene yoban nai woke kuni yoba kupo. Ke fi wode yiku. Eh, no don ki gi. Asi gi kuo. Ke fi wode yiku. Eh, makana. Ota ako oje de benjo. Oya de kwa nama. Ako na watu mu nem. Acho mu kunu ti yela ya lo nkuni fu nu chera. Ni yoba kupo. Kuchaya bife kaparo si ya ya kurutu muna yendo azante kurutu muna yendo azante daro di nenu muna bomo negenti ene kenu ndi nekunsi ne soela e esirungu na kemesi anumi ibo.